Welcome back to the Nest.js full course. From this episode forward, we'll focus on authentication and authorization in Nest.js. Over the next several episodes of this course, we'll cover different aspects of authentication and authorization in Nest.js in details. So in this episode, which is actually the first episode on the authentication part of this course, we will first create the user module and then leverage the power of database triggers in order to hash the user password. This is Sakura Dev channel and we'll come back to the episode 13 of our Nest.js full course. In the first step, we need to create a user module. So let's open up the terminal and this time, instead of just creating a module, let me create a resource. So here I'm going to use nest G and then res, which stands for resource. And then let's put a name for it. So what is the resource here in Nest.js? A resource is a full fledged module with its controller service DTOs and also the entity. So it creates not only the module for us, but also controller services entity and also DTO for the user module. So let's run this command. First, it actually asks for what transport layer we want to use. It gives us a bunch of options, REST API, GraphQL, microservices, and WebSockets. We're gonna just go with the REST API and we just put yes. We're generating the CRUD HTTP endpoint for the user control. And here, as you can see, it creates the user module. If I open it, you can see it creates the controller along with its spec file, the user module itself, and also the user service. It also creates a create user DTO, but it's just a empty class. We need to develop these DTOs and it also creates a user entity for us. And since we already have created the user entity within the main entities directory of our application, we don't need these new created entities. And as you can see, it's just a empty class. So we just remove the entity directory from the user module and let's go to the user controller. It creates the CRUD HTTP endpoints like create, find all, find one, update, and also remove endpoints. And here in the services, it just declares the functions for CRUD operation. So we just need to complete the body of each function. So now let's go to the user entity that we have already created. And here, as you can see, it contains ID, first name, last name, email, avatar URL, created ad, and its relationship. So here we need to add a password column for the user. So here, after the last column, we're gonna add another column, column the creator, and let's call it password. Let's set its type to string. And at this point, I'd like to emphasize an important tip. Although most of you guys might know this, but let me point it out here. We should not store the plain passwords in our database. Actually storing the plain passwords in our database is a major security risk. If our database is compromised, which means that an attacker hacks into our database, the attacker can gain direct access to our user credentials. So first we need to hash the passwords and then store the hashed version of the passwords in our database. Actually hashing passwords transform them into an irreversible string of characters. So even if hackers obtain the hashed password, they cannot recover the original password. Therefore, it significantly protects our user accounts. So in order to hash the user password before inserting the user into our database, we can write a function in our user service. And every time that we need to insert a user in our database in the create function, first we hash the password and then insert the user into our database. But most of relational databases offer something called triggers. With triggers, we can run a function before or after running a CRUD operation. For example, we can define a before insert trigger for the user table and every time we are going to insert a user into our table, the before insert trigger will be run before actually the insert statement is being run in our database. So we're gonna leverage the power of triggers here and write a before insert trigger for our user entity. So automatically, when we are inserting a user into our database, that trigger will be run before running the insert statement. And in that trigger, we are going to hash the password of the user. So here at the end of our entity, we're gonna create a before insert trigger. So I'm gonna use a decorator from the type ORM called before insert. And then we're gonna define a function for hashing the password. I'm gonna call it hash password. And inside it, we are going to replace 
the plain password with the hashed version of the password. And here we are going to use a very famous package for hashing and it is called Bcrypt. So let's install the Bcrypt. I open up the terminal and I'm going to say npm i Bcrypt. Okay, and then we need to install the types of the Bcrypt package in our project. So here I'm going to say npm i and then dash d because it is going to be a dev dependency and then add types slash Bcrypt. All right, so let's close the terminal and let's import the Bcrypt library here. So I just import everything as Bcrypt from Bcrypt package. Okay, now we can use the Bcrypt package in our before insert trigger. So here in the hash password function, we're going to set the password, this dot password, and here we're going to use the Bcrypt dot hash function. It actually takes two parameter. The first one is our plain password. So just pass the plain password to it. And the second one is the number of the salt rounds. So what is this salt round? The salt round in Bcrypt determines the complexity of the hashing process. So a higher salt round value increases the security but it also slows down the hashing process. So we need to choose a value that balances security and performance. The documentation of the Bcrypt suggests using number 10 for the salt rounds. So this hash function based on the salt rounds will hash the plain password for us and returns it. And also you need to know that it is a async function. So we need to use await before it. And also we need to turn the hash password into an async function. Okay. So in this way, before inserting a user into our database, we automatically hash the password of the user with the Bcrypt package and then save the hashed version of the password in the password field. The other important function of the Bcrypt that we are going to use is is the compare function and it takes two arguments the plain password and the hashed version of the password it first hash the plain password in the first argument and then compare it with the second hashed password that we're going to get from our database so here you might ask why we don't need to provide the number of salt rounds in the compare function and the answer is that the number of salt is implicitly included within the hash password so when the bcrypt generates a hash it incorporates the salt into the output this means that the salt is integral part of the stored hashed value therefore when you provide the original password and the stored hashed to the bcrypt.compare function the same salt that is used in the original hashing process is automatically extracted from the hashed version of the password and then is used for comparison so that's it for hashing the password and now let's go to the user service and implement the create function first we need to develop our create user dto we're going to expect a first name which is going to be string also a last name we're going to need an email the avatar url and also the password then we need to use the class validator decorator for validating these values for the first name it is going to be a string so we're going to use a string just copy that we're going to use it for the last name also for the email and also at is email because this is going to be an email for the avatar it is going to be a string and also we're going to use is url and since the avatar url is optional here we're going to put a question mark here and also use is optional for this field and for the password for now we are going to use just is string later in this course we will create a custom decorator for the password validation that contains the rules that we are going to enforce for a powerful password like the number of characters existing of the special characters and so on so for now we just use the e string decorator for that and let's save this now we can go to the user controller and here in the create function as you can see it uses the create user dto and let's go to the user service that create function and here first we need to inject the user repository so we need to create a constructor for this class constructor and inside the constructor we're going to use the at inject repository and pass the user entity to it okay and then define it private user repo and it is going to be of type repository and in the generic we need to define the user entity then we just need to put the body of the constructor so in this way we inject the user repository into our user service 
Okay, and then we go to the create function here and use the user report to insert a new user into our user table. So first we need to define a user const user and we're going to use user repo for creating a user object for us. It's a async operation. So we use await and then use the this that user repo and call the create function and pass the create user DTO to it. And since we are using the await keyword, we're going to mark this function as async. So this line does not insert the user into our database. It's just create the user object based on the create user DTO that we are feeding to it. So next we are going to insert that user. So we're going to just return and then await this that user repo that save and then pass the user object. Okay, that will insert the user into our database. We can directly use the save function and pass the create user DTO to it in order to insert a new user to our database. But since we are using the trigger here before insert, we must first create a user object with the create function of the user repo and then save that user object. In this way, the before insert trigger will be run before inserting the user into our database. So now let's run the application and we got this error here, which complains about the using of the user repository inside the user module. So we need to register the user repository in the import section of our user module, specify the imports and pass a list. And then inside it, we're going to use type or module and then call the for feature function and send the list here and inside it we're going to specify the user entity okay if i save that you can see the error is gone okay our server is running without any error and here's one important thing that you need to keep in mind if your user table have some existing record inside it adding a password column to it will cause an error because our password column can't take null values and for those already saved records inside our user table the value for this new column will be nulled and since it can't take null it causes error so make sure to define a default value for it if you have already some records inside this table or you can set the nullable to true so now let's go to insomnia and send a post request to the slash user api which actually calls the create function of the user controller and then pass this body alongside the request so as you can see we have set the password to just one two three if i send the request it will create the user inside our database you can see it has an id inside it but this time you can see the password is hashed in our database actually the value of one two three for this plain password is hashed and then inserted into the password fields of our user table and let's get back to our vs code inside the user service if we just directly call the save function of the user repo and feed the create dto to it you will see that the before insert trigger will not be run so if i get to the insomnia again and send the post request again you can see the plain password one two three is saved into our database so it is really important to first create the user object with the create function of your repo and then pass the created user to the save function of the user repo in this way we make sure that our before insert trigger of the user entity is run before inserting the new user into our database so that's it for this section and in the next episode we are going to enforce the password validation by creating a composite decorator for our create user DTO so make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell in order to get informed about the next video and also if this video was helpful for you please hit the like button because it not only support me but also helps to reach this video to more people so stay tuned for the next video and have a nice time bye bye